if you're a guy who is feeling inadequate when it comes to your masculinity, whether it be your inability to get a date or low income, then you may turn to online spaces, sometimes referred to as the Manosphere, which promises to teach you how to be a man. These spaces tend to promote the idea that the number of real men is dwindling, and that's because testosterone is dwindling, assuming that testosterone is pretty much the hormonal marker of everything manly. As they suggest, high testosterone men are more attractive, more confident, and more successful than low testosterone weaklings. All you need is an all-meat diet, some mail-order pills, or whatever this thing was, and you too can increase your testosterone levels. Cold showers, nofap, oysters, an entire ecosystem of testosterone-boosting advice exists just a click away. But I think that this does a disservice to the complexity of testosterone. It's far more interesting than its designation as the manly man hormone, and understanding the subtleties of testosterone may even leave us with a radically altered image of what masculinity means to begin with. Success in terms of attraction and status tends to involve out-competing others, and competition tends to suggest that one must be more aggressive. Hence, many masculinity advocates tie testosterone specifically to aggression-boosting properties. This has some scientific basis, as in almost all species, males have more circulating testosterone than females, and importantly, male aggression is more prevalent when testosterone levels are at their peak. Here, there is an almost perfect correlation. This can be supported in a subtraction plus replacement experiment. By subtracting the testes through castration, we see aggression decrease across many species, including humans. And when given replacement testosterone, we see that these castrated individuals return to pre-castration levels of aggression. Simple, right? Testosterone causes aggression. However, it should be noted that castration does not lead to an absolute elimination of aggression. These individuals still act out in aggressive ways. So we can't really conclude that aggression is entirely testosterone dependent. Additionally, studies find that the more experience a male has of being aggressive prior to castration, the more aggressive they continue to be after the castration, suggesting there's some social learning that is entirely independent of testosterone. But surely those with high testosterone are more likely to be aggressive. However, several studies show that differences in testosterone levels among individuals fail to accurately predict who will actually be aggressive. As the British endocrinologist John Archer writes, there is a weak and inconsistent association between testosterone levels and aggression in human adults, and administration of testosterone to volunteers typically does not increase their aggression. I always heard that having a good skincare routine is one of the most important things that you can do in terms of hygiene and appearance. However, I always struggled in knowing what that meant exactly. After trying so many different products, I gave up and concluded that skincare is way too confusing. That is until I tried Tiege. Honestly, it's the best skincare system out there. I've noticed that my skin is practically glowing compared to before. I'd personally recommend the level 1 system which comes with the following a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of dead skin cells, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20, and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. Their products have made my skin look and feel better than ever, but you don't have to just take my word for it. They have over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers from around the world. In addition to amazing skin, members of Tiche Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, pause or cancel at any time, and free US shipping, and low-cost shipping to most other countries. And because Tiche Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today.
So if testosterone doesn't promote aggression explicitly, what does it do? Well, in terms of social cognition, it decreases empathic mimicry, those subtle micro-expressions we use when mimicking the faces of others in order to understand them. It also makes us less capable of understanding others' emotions when looking into someone's eyes. But this is a small social trade-off when we consider the affective benefits. Namely, testosterone is involved in the winner effect, where winning a competition increases an animal's willingness to compete again and increases their success in future competitions. Basically, success and testosterone are intimately connected, and success, of course, feels good, as demonstrated in the connection between testosterone centers and the dopaminergic pathways of the brain. However, this can be a bit of an issue. The winner effect can make someone overconfident and impulsive, decreasing activity in our moralizing and deliberative prefrontal cortex, and increasing the sensory pathways that tend to prioritize low accuracy and immediate inputs. We already kind of knew this. High testosterone men tend to be imagined as impulsive, dominating, and insensitive, but nonetheless winning. Self-help books that preach the advice to stop caring and reductive forms of stoicism populate the manosphere, advocating for a masculinity that is unconcerned, emotionally suppressed, and willing to win at all costs, because at the end of the day, testosterone makes us feel good. This nonetheless is a highly simplistic image of testosterone. The truth is that testosterone is highly context dependent, as are most hormones. Testosterone can increase our anxiety when threatened, prompting us to act, yet it can also decrease our anxiety when we feel cocky, prompting us to make mistakes. Testosterone can make us want to take risks competitively, prompting us to fight our enemies, yet it can also make us want to take risks socially, prompting us to form friendships. Testosterone doesn't clearly promote one behavior or another. Or does it? There is one clear consistent factor in the influence of testosterone. It tends to promote pre-existing patterns in social behavior. That is, it is concerned with preserving status over promoting it. This is best demonstrated in a 1977 study with a group of monkeys, where each monkey was concretely observed along a social hierarchy. Testosterone was administered to the monkeys in the middle of the group hierarchy. According to masculinity advocates, a promising hypothesis would be that testosterone would lead to the middle monkeys fighting and perhaps overtaking the top of the pack monkeys. However, what was observed instead was that the middle monkeys, juiced up on testosterone, decided to punch down. They became more aggressive to the monkeys that were lower than them in the hierarchy, leaving the dominant monkeys alone. As the primatologist and neurobiologist Robert Sapolsky writes, testosterone did not create new social patterns of aggression, it exaggerated pre-existing ones. Specifically, testosterone appears to amplify already socially learned behavior through increasing the speed of action potential firing, rather than creating entirely new action potentials. Testosterone's actions are contingent and amplifying, exacerbating pre-existing tendencies towards aggression rather than creating aggression out of thin air. This has an interesting implication. As we have seen, testosterone appears to increase after a challenge. For example, testosterone will increase when a hierarchy is organized or reorganized, or it may rise in anticipation of a competitive event, even when simply watching our favorite sports team. Testosterone is primed to secrete when a situation is tied to our psychology of dominance and self-esteem. But what happens when a situation requires us to be nice and non-aggressive in order to defend our status? In one study, researchers used the ultimatum game, a game in which participants have to decide how to split money between themselves and other players. This specific paradigm also involved the element of reputation, whether you decided to share or not was communicated to future rounds with other players. Notably, when administered with testosterone, participants became even more sharing and consistently made generous offers. When testosterone rises after a challenge, it doesn't just promote aggression, instead it prompts whatever behaviors are needed to maintain status. In this case, what was needed to maintain status was generosity. 
We also see something similar with a recent study on the trolley problem and testosterone, where testosterone administration led to greater sensitivity to moral norms and values. It can actually be quite pro-social, merely an amplifier of pre-existing social schemas and environmental context. That ultimatum study had one more cherry on top. Some participants were given saline, but were told that it was testosterone. This group, thinking they were juiced up on the aggressive manly hormone, consistently made antisocial and selfish offers. Here we see the strength of this collective belief that surrounds testosterone, baked into every conversation that tries to justify boys being boys through an appeal to pseudoscientific endocrinology. We nonetheless believe that testosterone is the aggression hormone, and this subsequently makes us act more aggressively when we feel like we're high on it. So no, men aren't more aggressive because of testosterone. It's not that simple. Instead, it looks like there are certain environmental and social factors that promote aggression and violence, with testosterone acting as an amplifier. But it could just as easily be an amplifier in pro-social behaviors, as long as we promote a form of masculinity that involves compassion and emotional disclosure. I think Sapolsky's words sum this up quite well. Testosterone makes us more willing to do what it takes to attain and maintain status, and the key point is what it takes. Engineer social circumstance right and boosting testosterone levels during a challenge would make people compete like crazy to do the most acts of random kindness. In our world riddled with male violence, the problem isn't that testosterone can increase levels of aggression. The problem is the frequency with which we reward aggression. This video was sponsored by Tish Hanley.